So, Where is it in the Bible? Um, yeah, in the disc. I have a PDF, actually, and it explains some different verses that are in it. Sure. Um, in Chronicles, it talks about a non-immovable plane. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can take that for what it worth. Some yeah. people say, like, my faith won't be moved. Yeah. Right? Or this particular group of people cannot be moved. Mm -hmm. um, and so people can kind of go off on that tangent, you know, but yeah. uh, my idea of flat earth um, doesn't necessarily have to be based on my personal beliefs on a creator or not. Yeah. What people do find is that when they realize that this step back and just be like, okay, what do you need to show me? What, whatever that feeling is to you, universe, what do you need to show me, universe or creator or whatever, I feel that through Jesus Christ, you need a mediator to communicate with our creator. Mm -hmm. We cannot, we are, we are not clean sure. and we need to be cleansed yeah. first to then have a relationship with our creator. And I would, I would agree that that is the main Christian belief. Okay. I personally, yeah, fair enough. not that, but yeah. And then, so I didn't believe until I was 26. So yeah. you probably have a long ways to go. Well, you know? I don't know. I've grown up in a Christian household, Christian school all my whole life. Yeah. So I've had a lot of chances to observe, to learn mm -hmm. from this. And despite that, I have not been proven yet. And yeah. I have, I've always told, I have very religious friends, family, I've mm -hmm. always told them that if I felt that the religion was the correct one for me, mm -hmm. I would choose it no matter which one I did. Yeah. Whatever that creator is. I, I'm sure there's something out there, mm -hmm. regardless of that. Do you uh, believe in evolution? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even though you've never observed that before or yeah. anything? Right? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, and well, then I, so I mean, science would be your church then, right? I would not say it's my church, no. Um, okay. But you believe that an evolution is science-based, right? Yeah, but that, I don't think that that needs to be a religion in my, my opinion. Okay. Have you ever observed a fish turning into a lizard? No, because that takes a very long process. Have you ever observed process. a planet being formed? No. Um, I'd okay. say that the, the only way that I can somewhat be sure of it or in my own mindset be validated or think it's validated is the idea of... of how our genes might be related to that among the other people. You know, sure. We're very close off of being related to a monkey just based on, I don't know how many genes are off the top of my head, something like that. So I would say by that, there is pretty sufficient evidence, of course. What if, if we were all created by the same creator and there's just commonalities and that's why monkeys have limbs like we do and we have limbs like they do? What if you use so evolution on? to create us? Yeah. Huh? What if you use evolution to create us? I can't at all agree with that. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Um, because I feel like it's a demonic spirit, in my opinion, to Evolution. think to think that we came from some animal primate. And why is it that there's monkeys here now anyways? I thought we were evolved. Why are, did they not evolve? I don't understand how that works. That's a fair point. Do you think that we're different than animals? 100%, yes. Um, so could God not have given us a consciousness? That's different than animals and that, that distinguishes us. Um, animals are, I feel, programmed to have an innate obedience to him. And he chose to give us, give us what I feel is like free will and consciousness to choose to have a relationship with him or not. So you, you think we do have free will? Oh yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah. I'm not going to hold anything against anybody yeah. because my idea would be if I were Adam and Eve, I would have probably sinned to... Yeah given the circumstances. Yeah. yeah, I think that that's a very Me fair too. point. So yeah. I don't hold it against I them. Well. I don't hold it against anybody for being who they are, where they're at. Because I've been through a lot myself. Sure. I've been <laughs> deceived. I've been naive. I've believed people. And then I found out that they were lying to me. And it has affected my life incredibly. And so now I just choose to step back and just be careful about who I trust. So I when, when did you come into this about four years ago. Yeah, I spent nine months in Thailand and I taught English over there. And going over to a second or third world country is yeah. like a culture shock. Yeah, <laughs> like sure. massive. I want to do that exact thing. Before that. Um, and then you come back to America and it's even more intense than when you initially left because then you see a 60 inch 3D TV with surround sound and PS3 and DVDs and you know, like I had. I was pretty comfortable when I came back. Yeah. And then I, from my thought and my experience in Thailand, I started to become a minimalist and I started to let a lot of stuff go because mm -hmm. I didn't feel I needed it. Because there were people I was hanging out with who were spending $80 a month on rent yeah. and using a bucket to flush the toilet. Sure. And they were happy. Yeah. <laughs> and I come back and I got this, right? 
in this 10 by 10 and I'm not. That's fair. You know? And that's that's where I make the argument that I think that happiness is happiness is what you make of your situation, right? So by one person's definition of happiness will not necessarily be your own. So yeah. in your case, many people who have like you said, a 16-inch 3D TV, yeah. would be happy. Yeah. But to you, you're not. And so the people in Thailand who have close to nothing are generally happy because that's what they have mm -hmm. and they make of what they do. Um, which is, yeah, <coughs> very fair. Can I share with you this idea that actions speak louder than words? Oh, I, I agree. Okay. And so with that, do you think that if our creator or the universe sees you taking action about something, mm -hmm means more and then he'll allow you with more grace to pursue the things that you have passion about kind of like you know me selling my tv and stuff yeah then that, that i'm revealing that this stuff doesn't matter to me anymore right, right yeah. yeah and so he will present to me new things that would occupy my time because i was occupied with ps3 back in the day right sure so i need to replace that time or, or we get bored right and idle not an idle mind is the devil's playground you know with that idea sure and so by being being out here i only hope to convey that my testimony coming out here regularly would reveal that this is more than just conversation like this is something that somebody really needs to settle in their heart and say that guy i cannot talk to him anymore because i don't agree with them or at least come to a common ground where we can at least have a conversation about it because each individual has to choose their path mm -hmm. and what's important to them that's true you know and so you're constantly testifying uh, uh, by your actions what's important yeah. not by your words per se so um you know there's the saying this is a little different but uh, yeah. like the saying ignorance is bliss right yeah. um you don't, i'm assuming you don't agree with that or, um <clears throat> i you know there was probably a time when i agree with that mm -hmm. you know um, but in Hosea 4, 6, he says that my people die because of lack of knowledge. You know, so I think that being withheld information, whether it's um, true or not, at least give me the information so I can make a decision, right? Don't just tell me that something is true because it's my in my education and you all voted that this is true, right? By a consensus. Give me all of the options. Like, why don't we teach creationism in the public church, right? Why don't we teach all this stuff all at once and let children discern, discern what they want to choose to believe or not? That's all I'm saying. It's kind of like, you know, when parents want to have their child do something with sports or extracurriculars, right? Give them everything, right? Give them a hockey stick, a baseball bat, a basketball, you know, a golf club or you know, hiking sticks or whatever, sure. and just let them have it. Throw, throw, whatever, throw against the wall and just whatever sticks encourage them to do that one thing. Yeah. And I don't think we do that here. I think we just compartmentalize everybody, sure. cut, copy and paste, and everybody has the same mindset when they graduate high school. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard for people to critically think because when they graduate high school, back to the religion idea, they graduate it like it's a seminary school, and that's their objective viewpoint and anything that comes in the way of that they get irritated like they're they get nervous or they get call me names or whatever you know and i just don't agree with that you know? i need to go yeah. hey i appreciate you guys yeah, yeah, good, good talk to you. joshua luke yeah. luke jackson jackson yeah, right on guys oh, yeah, i know right uh, always the win at least it keeps the bugs away yeah Hello, hello. How's it going? Pretty well. How about yourselves? Good. Good. So, what do you think the world's flat or? I have a pretty good idea. Yeah. Sorry. What do you think about that idea? Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's round. Okay. Could you give me two evidences, maybe to help me reconsider my thought life? Uh, um, do you? I don't know. Picture some space. Okay. And then, what's another one you got? Uh, uh, airplanes can fly around. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like there's like a route if you're going from I don't even know the correct like Santiago, Chile to something you go Australia. Up, you go around, that's you go over. You don't go yeah. all the way across. Did you know that nobody's ever north to south navigated before? No. Yeah. So it's always connecting flights like this. And what's the quickest way between two points? 
Straight line. Straight line, yeah. So with that being said, do you feel like it would be more effective to fly an airplane straight or to like curve it around and maybe spend an extra $500 on gasoline just to go around something? Go straight. Yeah, just go straight, right? And so with your images of outer space before, are you talking maybe like these guys? Yep. Yeah. So which size is the proper America? Do you happen to know? Um, the left. The left one? How about yourself? Can you see with your sunglasses on? Yeah. <laughs> I've never been in outer space. So I haven't I either. Really hey, know. that's a, right on, man. Okay, so you're on your first step. So why is it that you think that the one on the on your left? What is? I see most commonly. Okay. And then where did this come from? Do you happen to know? <clears throat> uh, satellite. NASA.gov. So these are official NASA images. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So why is it that the circle is the same diameter here, but then America seems to have gained weight over the winter time here? I couldn't tell you either. Did you know that they can fake them because they know you won't investigate how they're being faked? No. But yeah. Why would they lie to you? So let's just okay. hold on. All right. So what they're doing is they're scanning a flat plane with a high altitude airplane or drone. And then they're putting it into a composite, painting it up, photoshopping it, and then they put a hot spot here, and then they say that that's where you live, even though you've never seen this with your own eyes before, like your friend said. So how is that any different than a Christian believing that Jesus is a white, Caucasian, long-haired man who walked on water? Is that any different? Because you've never seen Jesus, but that's how he's predict projected, right? Yeah. Okay. So would you say that government provides you with information and then you eat it up because they wouldn't lie to you? No, I believe that they would lie to you, but I just don't understand why they lie about this certain fact. Yeah. No, I'm what not if, saying the government doesn't lie to people. I'm just saying, does it give them any advantage for us saying that the world is round mm -hmm. and flat? Just by you saying that statement, why would they lie, gives them a reason to lie to you. Okay. That's how they were. They're CIA. I mean, they're intelligence. They know how to lie to you without making you think that they're lying to you. No, I understand, but I don't yeah. see the positive in that lie. Yeah, right. So they're they're basically formulating your entire worldview on you living here. Yeah. And they can lie to you because you don't know. Do you know the dimensions of your ball earth you believe you live on? Whatever the scientist is told you. Right, exactly. So you're appeasing to authority, right? Mm -hmm. So those are profits. So if it is right? flat, where's like the end of it? <laughs> So the edge? Yeah. Okay. The there has to be an edge? Well, do you think it goes forever? Why not? There. I mean forever. Like infinitely forever. Yeah. Horizontally. Yes. Level. Yes. Not a ball in outer space. No, and, and not a disc floating in outer space either. Okay. Okay? So we are the floor of the universe and everything above us revolves around us. We are special. We are that special. So do you think the government kept us from figuring out that if it was flat, um, figure out like other planets and stuff? Planets have nothing to do with anything. Those aren't tangible objects that you can travel to. And if you do want to believe that, again, you're appeasing to authority that they did it, no different than a Mormon believing in their church. So if it is flat, how do you do night and day? It is flat. If it is? Yeah. So, How do you do night and day then? Yeah, so have you ever seen the tilt of the Earth from outer space before? Never been out It's uh, 23 degrees. Yeah, it's 23.4 degrees, right? But have you ever seen the tilt? That's what changes the seasons, right? Allegedly, yeah, right. Because the sun is stationary and the Earth and is rotating like this, right? And it's also traveling around the sun, yeah. right? But the sun is also traveling, did you know that? The entire, the entire solar system is traveling through space also at almost a half a million miles an hour. And the Earth is spinning around the sun at 66.660 miles an hour. The remainder of your tilt at a 90 degree angle is 66.6 .6 degrees. Isn't that an interesting number? The number six is man. That reveals to you that man created that equation. So that should be a red flag already. And so what if the sun were to just traverse in a circuit around the earth like this, and it had a particular relationship with the magnetics of the North Pole. And so during the summertime, it's closer to the north to like here. And then as it becomes winter, it might just circuit further away. Or it could be a vortex where the sun does one of these and then it comes back down. So it perpetually does that forever and ever.
Okay. But then on the theory that it never ends. Mm -hmm. So why has nobody traveled and just kept going and going and never came back? How do you know nobody has done that? I, I don't know, but... I don't know that either. You think somebody yeah. would come back saying, it doesn't, you know, I didn't reach, <clears throat> like, say, I don't, the Earth is circle, right? <clears throat> yep. You go from here and you go around and you go, from, you go from North America to Asia, right? If you go through the Pacific. Yeah, we could use a map right here. Yeah. So let's use a flat map because that makes more sense because maps are flat, right? Okay. So what? Because when you go camping, you don't say, hey, hon, you got the globe? We're going to go camping. We need a globe. Do you got the globe? No, hon, I just have this map, this piece of paper. I don't, is this even going to work? No, we need the globe to help us navigate through the Grand Canyon. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we get a flat map. And so you were saying like with flights, so connecting flights like this, yeah. that's how you would just travel. So to say like, well, what happens when you go here? Because exactly. I had somebody earlier saying like, oh, well, you're just going to teleport here. No, no, no. You just travel here further away. So what if there's just more land that they're not revealing to you? And sometime in the future, there's an alien invasion. But it's just another landmass over here with a civil civilization that you've never met before. And they just understand magnetics. And then they can have things travel to North America. And are you familiar with 5G that's coming out? So it's, are you familiar with 5G? Like 4G, 5G, yeah. Oh. So 5G, right, is the next level of communication where you can download something in like one second and it's like 50 gigs. Like it's gonna be almost instantaneously. So what if the 5G towers that you have to have every few city blocks in downtown Minneapolis had some kind of magnetic properties to them also and so when you intensify the magnets and the frequency of those 5G towers, they were able to repel something like a magnet. Okay, have you ever done magnet experiments where you have a magnet here and a magnet here and it's a disc and you can try to put the disc on top of it but it won't because it's a polar opposite or the same, right? So what if they were able to use 5G and just dress up what they would call a UFO from another planet and just all that they're doing is just having an understanding of magnets. So the 5G towers are here on Minneapolis, and then they have a ship come in, and you're like, oh my God, it's Independence Day, right? And you go on top of the IDS Center, and you're like, take me, take me. But they're really just an understanding of magnets, and they're able to repel or uh, hone in on that magnet, and then it's just a ship that's all dressed up to look really fancy, but it's just an understanding of magnets. And the layman will say, oh my God, I can't believe it. You know, we're being invaded by aliens. But again, it's just a civilization over here from a couple hundred years ago that has all this technology that we have here now, but they're just weaning it off over to us over a couple hundred years. I get it. Then. I mean, <laughs> I guess anything could be possible, but it's just that sounds like a lot of things that people would have to hold in lie about like in the government and then NASA and all that stuff. What is the best way to keep a secret? Don't, don't, to know. kill the other person that knows it, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, Because most likely most people are gonna not be able to keep secrets, right? Mm -hmm. But what if you're part of an organization or a group that either has all their bloodlines or they're part of a secret society? Okay, do you, are you a police officer? Okay, do you know anybody that's a police officer? Okay, they have a silent uh, code of silence, right? Yeah and they basically back each other, right? Did you know that doctors have the same thing where another doctor won't testify against another doctor? I didn't know that one. Yeah, so if a doctor is malpracticing and another doctor can testify and confirm that they are malpracticing, they can choose not to testify against that doctor. Yeah. Is that fair? Is that ethical? No. Okay, so do they are they obligated to tell you the truth about anything? No. Okay, do you like watching baseball? Yeah. yeah, I do too. I used to play when I was younger, shortstop and catcher. Okay. Yeah, and so if you like playing baseball, why would why do you even care about flat earth, right? Why would you care about any of the things that are going on out there? We have your baseball. We have the playoffs tonight. I mean, we got the finals going on tonight, right? Watch yeah. the finals, man. Don't go watching flat earth videos. So what are you going to say? It's just all a distraction? Yeah. Bread and circuses. Everything is bread and circuses to keep you away from truth. And when truth resonates with you, you will be drawn to it. But why Why are they hiding the truth? What's the positive to it? To have control of have control. what Who you do. Who has control? I don't know. That can be debated, right? 
I don't know who has control. Is it one person? Is it like a family? Is it a certain... Well, if you believe in like... Uh, belief texts, faith texts, you could say Satan, Lucifer, you know, the evil one, the enemy. That's the one entity. But he uses human beings as a conduit to manifest his things to control so you people. Think it's religiously. Um, I think there's an aspect of them ah, using uh, the ball earth as a means to control people because I bring you back to that alien invasion idea. I bet you if I asked everybody here at the lake about aliens from another planet, I would probably say eight out of ten people would probably think an alien invasion is possible. Because they keep on proliferating the idea through Hollywood and news media and stuff like that by saying, oh, we found another Earth-like planet. Prove it. I can't go there. Otherwise, that's just fantasy talk. I mean, that's not proof of anything. And so when I came across the idea of Flat Earth, it was before I had an idea that it was just conveyed in the Bible. Because what you will find is that water lays level and flat always. Okay, so it's contained here, and we call this a lake, right? And it's contained because of the shoreline. Yes. So what is the ocean? Well, the ocean is just a big giant lake with a bunch of islands in it that we call continents. So if water lays level and flat, at what point does water start to bend to create curvature in a ball? that you've never seen before in outer space. Would that be gravity? Exactly, right. That's never been proven. And gravity is based on numbers, so then you're saying math and numbers are reality. And that means that observation cannot be trumped. Uh, observation is trumped by numbers. Because I could say, I came up with this equation for us to land on Mars. So yes, mathematically, with the math used, we could mathematically land on Mars. Yeah. Okay, and we can think about it and just be like, gosh, that would be so fun to land on Mars now because we can do it with math. But if we can just travel to an island here, is that objective reality? If we can use math to travel to this island right here, is that objective reality? It wouldn't be because we can travel to this island. Yeah. The five of us can't travel to Mars. We have to appease to authority using their math and watch them do something we would love to do. Is it more fun to watch somebody do something or to do it yourself? Yes. Depending upon the physicality, right? Yourself, usually. Yeah, usually, right? Yeah. Especially in terms of exploring, right? You guys seem like you'd like to explore, you know? So why would they limit us from exploring other lands and resources out here? Well, because they want to keep you all, <clears throat> keep you all in here. Give you your baseball, your basketball, your job, your family. And I'm not saying any of those things are bad. I'm just saying be aware of them now that they are there to be distractions to keep you from the truth. And whatever truth that is to you, I would encourage you to at least seek it. You know? That's why I'm here. You know? I don't know. I have no, I'm, not, I'm not very... So there's no... Uh, educated in that. Yeah, so there's two ideas in the idea with Flat Earth, right? That there's an Antarctic ice ring yeah, right here, and 60,000 miles in circumference, yeah. right? Or, I've never seen that before. I've seen pictures, but pictures don't mean things are real, okay? So if a flat earther wants to say the ice wall is real, that's, hey, kudos to them, good for them. But that's still limiting your mind, okay? Because you're in prison right here. This is so much surface area on this ball earth. And if you believe global warming, then that means that we have the pride and the ego and the audacity to do something to this earth. So then we have to go to another planet and go ruin that one? That doesn't even make any sense. I feel like we have no at all possibility of ruining this place. I think it naturally recycles itself and it can renew itself regardless of what we do to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So if you think that there's an ice wall, you're still limiting and, and closing off your mind in the possibility of infiniteness. Because they say outer space goes on infinitely and it's ever expanding, right? Sure. So why can't this land mass and water go on infinitely forever? And any luminaries that you see up in the sky, what if there's a, a firmament or a ceiling that you can't penetrate through? Yeah. Okay? So there's pressure. We have a pressurized system, right? 14.6 or 14.8 PSI. Okay? So instead of with gravity, there's a pulling <clears throat> what if there's a pressing of down of things? Okay. No, I mean, I mean, 
sure. I guess it makes sense. So when you look in the telescope, right, mm -hmm. and you see like Mars or different planet or stars, are they flat too? They're flat because of your perspective, yes. They will look like a disc to you. The only way that you will know something is a sphere is by getting to the other side of it. So... How do you know that that's a sphere? But when you look so at... the moon's flat. Yeah, it's at different points in time, like, let's <clears throat> say, like, December and June. Mm -hmm. That, let's say, Mars would look different, right? Okay. Because it would spin. Okay. So would that make it a sphere? Nope, that doesn't prove that it's a sphere. Again, you have to get to the other side of it, and that doesn't prove that you live on a ball earth anyways, does it? Do you measure your ceiling to measure your floor? Okay, so uh, you, have you ever done any carpentry or anything like that? Okay, do you think it's very logical to measure your ceiling to carpet your floor? No. Okay, so why would you use the luminaries in the sky to tell you where you live? True, but if those, if it's possible for that to be round, it'd be possible for us to be round too. Show me a picture. I don't. I mean, I don't either. Yeah. Right. And again, if water lays level and flat always, and it goes on infinitely forever, how does it turn into a ball, and how do you measure that? So you just don't believe in gravity. It's just everything just density and buoyancy and some kind of an ele electromagnetism, dielectric um, relationship. We live in an uh, an electro type of a universe, you know, where there's an ether, I feel. Um, human beings have the idea of ESP, per se, you know, where a mother and a son or a father and a daughter or people that are close to each other, like husband and wife, can finish each other's sentences, right? Yeah. Or they have a particular relationship with each other. Yeah. That is a communication between the medium of which we are in right now, which is air and atmosphere, right? Yeah. And so you're just communicating your thoughts in a way that is not verbal. Yeah. And I feel like that is the natural way for human beings is to communicate, is not verbal. Isn't like 80% is not verbal? Yeah, 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 body language and stuff like that. But I'm talking about hundreds or maybe even thousands of years ago. I think that over time, this type of speech is simplified for everybody. So your, alpha, your, your symbols that you call the alphabet, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, that is like the most dumbed down way to communicate with each other that the human race has ever experienced. Like I think like now our, the human race is very, very ignorant and very, very low IQ, in my opinion. Symbols like, you know, what the Chinese use and how they were using maybe in hieroglyphics, for example. I think that that is more of a way for us to communicate. Because you could probably have a whole entire book in just one symbol. But you have to be able to perceive it, right? Yeah. And to understand it. And so with the symbols and whatnot idea, is when you're looking up into the sky, okay? And like you were saying with the luminaries and how they are here and then they look different when they're over here. What if the medium that those lights are in is a liquid of some kind? And they're just light and we perceive it as light, but they're really vibrations and frequency. Okay? Yeah, okay. So, and they have a resonance to them. So That's what if, unique. What if I'm in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Why can't I see the Empire State Building if it's so tall? <laughs> and it's not that far away. Yeah. You know what I mean? How Why far? I see... Are you Superman? No, if I stand on top of the tallest building here, why can't I see yeah. the Empire like? Right, exactly. So, so, so what does your what does your weather app say your distance and visibility is usually? Ten miles. Okay. So you can't. So even your app tells you you can only see up to ten miles. And so between you and that object that you're trying to see, there's water vapor, air temperature, and ground temperature. And those water that water vapor is compounding onto itself, and the horizon is always alleged. You can never put a measurement on what the the horizon is because earlier in the day you're going to be able to see farther because there's less water vapor in the air because the sun hasn't been out to heat the, the ground up and evaporate the water vapor that's already in the ground right and so there's dust particles and you don't know what storm is going on 50 miles away it could be cloudy but you see as you look further into the horizon the clouds are converging to the horizon into the ground yes so that's your perspective. So the, 
so one funny thing about school is when we went to art class, they were telling you this. They were showing you how your eyes work. So then for people to come up and say, well, why can't I see forever? Well, because there's a conversions point, right? And then there's also the atmosphere of the water vapor compounding onto itself, like over a body of water. And I get people say, well, ships go over the horizon. That's a curvature. And it's like, well, no, because that's just water vapor, air temperature and water temperature. It's really simple. But they've tricked our minds because we were young. Now we don't have critical thought. We didn't have critical thought then. And now you're just too busy with all the stuff that you want to do in your daily life, like watch sports and go to work and hang out at the beach. Like, why would anybody want to do what I'm doing here, right? <coughs> right? See, to a lot of people, this is a waste of time to them. But to me, it's not because this is what I'm being called to do. So in, in some way, you want me here. And in some way, I need you here because otherwise I can't exist, right? But if somebody's not constantly questioning and keeping people on their toes and saying, no, 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 that's not going to fly. Just because you can say mathematically you can land on the moon doesn't mean I can objectively do it. I can mathematically go to Thailand, but I can objectively travel there if given $2,000. Right? But I don't have the resources to go to the moon or go to Mars. I have to appease to authority. I have to say, oh, well, government did it, so it must be true because they never lie. Right? But when you say, wait, 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 they do lie. But then you're like a Christian that's just picking and choosing Bible scriptures because Fox News says something that you agree with, but then CNN says something that you don't. So you're not going to read from the book of CNN, right? You read from the book of Fox News. You know, you read from the book of Donald Trump. I don't read from the book of Clinton. So all these people that you see on TV are your prophets. No offense. To some, right? And then they objectively listen to what they have to say and whatever it is that they say is true. So. No, I mean, I have no rebuttal to that, I guess. I don't, you know, I'm not here to, you know, one up anybody, right? But I do have things to share that I feel I could continue on and talk, but I like to stop and listen to what people have to say. So. I think I asked every question that, I mean, typical. What's your name? Corey. Joshua. Pleasure to meet you, man. Shane. Joshua. All right. Well, nice to meet you, like, Shane. These actually like videos. Of course, yeah. Take them. They're mixtapes. Yeah, I want mixtapes. Yeah. Know, yeah. Sure, man. Watch it. Cool. That's cool. Well, All right, thanks, man. Have an open mind. Fun. Not so yeah. much that your brain falls out, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you what your opinion is? I'm sorry. What's your opinion? Or what's your what? What are we supposed to change your mind on? Um, is there a way that you can measure the movement of the Earth? Because it's allegedly spinning, right? Yeah. Do you happen to know how fast at the equator the Earth is spinning like this? Isn't it like one sunlight hour, one sunlight How many hours are there in a day? 24. Okay. And if the Earth's circumference is 24,000 miles, how many miles an hour do you think the Earth is spinning now at the equator? One. Thousand yeah. miles. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. So how do you make a device that can measure the spin of the Earth that can be separated from the atmosphere or, quote, ether. So how do you know that the Earth is spinning? I don't. Right? You just take testimony of the government that tells you that it's true, right? Is that appeasing to a church? No. How so? Well, I don't know. I don't believe in I'm not, I'm, We're not talking about religion. We're talking about appeasing to authority. Okay, so if you're appeasing to, <laughs> if you're appeasing to people who you claim have gone to school longer than you, right? Yes. And they say that this is the tilt of the Earth at 23.4 degrees yes. in outer space that you've never seen before with your own eyes. Yes. How is that any different than a Christian believe a man walked on water? It's not. Okay, so could you say that your belief in the news and education is more faith-based? No. Okay. Well, I guess you could say. Yeah, because I mean, what objective truth do you have you can share with me that you live here on this ball earth in outer space? I mean, what other people tell me. Right, yeah. exactly. But with that being said, what two things have they told you to help you confirm that, yes, I live on a ball in outer space? Hollywood or movies or what? Um, <clears throat> maps, satellite images, stuff, supposedly. Allegedly, right? Yes. So, you, so like with this, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. So what if these were just composites 
of a, pl of a flat plane that was scanned, right? And then they projected onto a ball earth like this. I mean, is that possible? Yeah. Okay. I mean, anything is possible. Yeah. So with that being said, um, how do you know where you really live now then? I mean, I don't. <laughs> so most people, what they do when they broach the topic of flat earth, they say, oh, okay, so the earth is flat. Where's the edge? And they're just replacing the earth with the Frisbee yep. floating in outer space. What if the Earth just goes on instant, infinitely forever and ever and ever and ever? You ever played Minecraft before? Yes. What if it just was like that? Could be. I mean, I feel like... I, I understand that and I can see that, but... I see your I mean, gears if you were, turning. If you were Show. going to like go in like a boat, like say you went Show all me. the way around... Show me. We went on the boat somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that's the and four of us. Went, this is a pretty you know nice boat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we went exactly like, okay, so actually, say we started right here. Okay. We start walking. Mm hmm. No, uh, east. Okay. So we're going. Yep, so we're doing. Earth, okay. And we have a lot of days. We have like years off. Yeah. And so we start walking. Yeah. And then we get on a boat. We go okay. across the ocean. So we're using a compass and we're going the opposite of north, right? Yes. And we're going south. Okay. We're not, we're going east. Okay, we're going east. Yes. Okay, so we're going this way. So yes. Okay. Uh, so what do you see? This is but just then a you map. You would eventually get back to where you're Magic. Going. You, no. Okay, so. Because like if you were going around the earth, you yeah, eventually you're, get back to where you're going. Right. So you're using a compass to go east, which is always pointing north. So you're always just going to be traveling around your neighborhood. How is that any different than taking this path around the lake? You're just circumnavigating the lake. Right? Yeah? <laughs> show me. Because... Okay, wait. wait. Show, you can show me right here. Okay. <laughs> wait, no, I can't show you. Why? This is This is new. I know. Okay. Yeah. I'm just not good with maps. But... Oh, you're good. Okay. So, you're going east. Mm -hmm. You have your compass. Yep. It's pointing north, whichever. Mm -hmm. I don't know which way north is. But whenever you turn, it always points north. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're always going. So with a with a compass, also, what are you always doing with your compass? You're holding it parallel to the floor, right? Yes. So how is it that the compass is able to go into the core or crust of the Earth and get underneath like this here? Yeah. So you're going through the crust to get to the North Pole. That doesn't even make any sense. What if the North Pole was flat and level, and the compass you had to hold parallel to the ground? because we're parallel with the North Pole. Interesting. No, I never thought of it like that. Could be, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I get your point. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So do you think that with a ball earth, you could, if you know the dimensions of a basketball or a beach ball, you would be able to come up with some kind of a curvature calculation? Of earth? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you fairly decent with maths? No. No? Okay. That's fine because this, does it all for you okay. yeah and so what it does is it gives you the radius of what we're told the ball earth is and over a distance of 50 miles for example a building that's 1600 feet okay should be obscured by 1667 feet of water so you shouldn't be able to see that building over a 50 mile distance from shoreline to another shoreline. Yes. Because you're using water as your totem. That's how you know you're in this reality because water always lays level and flat. It never bends or curves or anything like that. And the only way it ever does is when you're told gravity and that's how water can conform to the exterior of a shape. So even with using people, a person's math, there needs to be a drop off point. Do you see what's happening here? Mm -hmm. So we're at the tangent and we're looking out over this curvature ball earth and after a thousand miles right here, there needs to be 128 miles of drop. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So even a building that's a hundred miles tall, you still can't see that hundred mile tall building because it's obscured by water. We see things too far. Technology has caught up with this lie. Okay, so you don't live here. Now, what it looks like, I could draw America right now with my eyes closed, right? Yeah. I could draw all of all of our seven continents with my eyes closed. Yes. So I'll take that objectively and I'll believe that. Okay. 
But that doesn't mean that there isn't more land that they're withholding from us and more resources and more everything else. We're contained here. We're prisoners. We're in a zoo. But you have, I mean, look at this. Why would you want to leave, right? It's like Trip and Billy's with Dave Matthews Band. Yeah. Eat and be merry, right? Just hang out. Why do you want to go? Just don't, you don't need to go out here. You don't need to go travel six months east or west or south or whatever to explore. Just stay here, hang out, with your friends, drink your coffee, go to your baseball games, and just, we'll, we'll handle it. We'll handle all the logistics. And that's what people do regularly, is they continually appease to authority and give their power over, and they never investigate anything on their own time. Why do you think you want to like call this captive here then? I'm sorry? Why do you think they want to keep this captive here? Well, they want to control you. They want your money. They want your taxes, right? I mean, they want your income, and any taxes that you do pay is just really paying off the interest of the Fed Reserve Bank, which is at like $20 trillion right now. So we live in a perpetual state of debt. So it's okay for the government to be in debt, but for you to be in debt, you get fined or imprisoned, but right? But isn't that specific to America? No, it's specific to everybody, because there's a World Bank on almost every, co every country, except oh, right. for allegedly North Korea and Iran, for example and in Syria with Gaddafi. Gaddafi wanted to allegedly give his people free water and energy. And the World Banks weren't having that. Yeah. Oh, and guess what happened to him? Right? So when you do really want to break away from the system and be independent, you are kind of treading on yeah. thin ice. I totally agree with that, you know? 100%. So that's all I'm here to do is just, you know, share information. I have a mixtape. You don't oh. mind, yeah. So, sure. yeah. do you want a mixed tape or a card? Okay, yeah. And my my YouTube channel is on the bottom, Authentic Intent. And I love coming out here often. And I just, you know, I can talk about whatever. You know, like is Nipsey Hussle dead? I don't know if that's right. Is Tupac dead? Oh, I've heard about that. Is Tupac Khalif from Jurassic Five, the guy with the dreads? Mm -hmm. Is that Tupac? Is the character that played Tupac dead, but the man who played Tupac still alive? I mean, right, you don't know. Because whatever information is given to you by mainstream or TMZ, 99% of the time, people, most people believe it. Even without investigating it. They'll just assume that, well, that's true, because the government said. You know? You don't know. You don't know. No. Yeah. So I'm just encourage people just to kind of step back and just not give their heart over to authority all the time. Yeah. And just say, hey, you know what? I just really don't agree with that. That's and I don't, cool. I don't have to. Good for you. So, That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Power so, to the people. Right? Exactly. I'm, I'm trying to just bring power back to the people, you know, and That's let them critically think. Yeah. And I think, I think the idea of government is if we don't have government and we just let people walk freely here at the lake, you're just gonna have random people just it's like the purge everywhere and I just yeah. don't agree with that personally yeah. you know I think that people will police each other and I think that there could be a group of civilians that could say hey you know what there needs to be something done with this person because they're causing a ruckus and we could all individually in a town vote to see whether or not we want to get rid of this person yeah. you know and, and we could choose to do that but we don't need government to do that for us like an organized government you're saying yeah because I mean in some way that is a government like I mean like you're yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. if you're, yeah, if you're... Like, if, like no buildings. Yeah, yeah, like right. Weird conspiracies around stuff like that. Yeah, yeah like so, that. and with that being said, I mean, you know, if you don't believe in everything the government says, and you are labeled as a conspiracy theorist, I don't think that's fair, because then you're saying, oh, so if I don't just believe flippantly on everything the government says, I get called names? Yeah. That's not fair. I can't tangibly go to the moon and land on it. Right? I can't prove that the moon can be physically landed on. Yeah, I, well, I guess I don't know. You can't prove the can, you can't prove the can. Exactly. I mean, it, it depends how you look at it. I mean, you but can't, to say you it, can't prove anything, and you can't. Well, you, know, I, I you you can prove stuff here objectively, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, but then to appease to authority and say, okay, you know what? I just don't want to believe that, and then everybody walks by and they point and laugh, right? I have a question. Yeah. Do you believe in space? No. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you think, like st like stars are? That yeah. So I think light the lights up. And above us, I think that there's a ceiling about maybe a hundred miles, and there's a firmament that we can't yeah. penetrate through. And so the luminaries are just light 
probably light, light projections of yeah. something that can be tangible in, uh, phys in the physical realm, yeah. but we see them as lights in the sky. And they have a certain resonance, frequency, and vibration to them. And so each light up there has its own unique frequency, just like each one of our thumbprints is different and our eyes are different than somebody else's, right? Yeah. So we could use technology to identify a person by their eyes yeah. or their teeth, right? And I feel that that's the same thing with the light luminaries up in the sky. Then, so if those light luminaries were to come through into our quote atmosphere yeah. or ether, they would manifest themselves into a human-like creature. Oh, interesting. Because this place has a resonance of where we are biological human beings and anything that would come down into this would manifest itself as the highest being, which would be physical human form. What about the sun and the moon then? Those are just luminaries too, yeah. So the sun has a particular relationship, in my opinion, with the North Pole. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a electromagnetic type of a light. And so as the sun is traveling further away from you, it's just like an airplane. Unless the airplane is landing in the distance, it's always going to be above your head, always. But then, how do you explain, like, you know how, like, in the winter, the sun's lower? Yeah. And the sun, is that just mm -hmm. where they set it, or, like, where it's set? Yeah, so with, with, the, with where you're coming from, again, back to the tilt, right? Back to the tilt of the earth? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, what if the sun, right now, was just directly overhead doing this? And then, like, when it's in the winter, it's yes. a little farther than Gotcha. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. here's the equator, and then, um, you know, I don't know a Tropic of Cancer and all that stuff. You know, yeah. I, I don't worry about that stuff. But basically, the sun is just doing a circuit like this. Yeah. And it's doing like that. Or it could be doing a vortex like this and coming back down. Yeah. You know, I don't really know. I didn't yeah. make this place. Yeah. But is the sun 93 million miles away? I don't at all think so. No. Because I don't think you can measure things like that up in the sky because yeah. so, they're not tangible like yeah. I can measure from here to that building right but uh, how could you measure tangibly the luminaries in the sky that's good point no these are all great points and you really never know yeah, so, yeah. interesting thank yeah. you so much for sharing your thanks opinion. for stopping by I appreciate yeah, you being civil yeah of course <laughs> all right have a good day thanks bye